What is up, everybody? Well, I don't know what the first thing I should even address here. Is it the fact that I'm trying to do a green screen thing here? Or the fact that I'm wearing a pink shirt? Uh, I don't know which is going to startle you guys most. But uh, either way, let, let's just tr truck along, shall we? Uh, anyways, you probably already saw the title. We recently got a couple glimpses into what... Uh, I don't know if I should say Solanus or Dodge or we'll just call it Ram for now, but their entrance into the not only the EV landscape, but especially the EV truck landscape. So we just got word of the Ram Revolution. So I really, first of all, hope that's not the name of the actual vehicle that they put on the market, and rather it's more of like the marketing behind it, as that's the name of the page that it is. Let's hope that they're still thinking of what the truck will technically be called, because I don't, it just doesn't roll off the tongue, like, hey, let's go hop in my revolution. Hey, let's go hop in my Ram revolution. Ram is just so easy to say. F-150, F-150, F-150 revolution. Hey, what do I know? Anyways, let's move on. Titles are not what we're here to talk about. So let me spill everything I know about the Ram. Well, first of all, we had CGI renders that like leaked a little bit ago and they look okay. I remember when I first saw them, I wasn't in love with them, but the more I looked at it, I was like, you know what? They're trying something new and you know what? I could see myself driving this vehicle. So overall, I think they're headed in a good direction and I like what they're doing. So Ram has made it clear that they're not focusing on being first to market, but rather the best to do it in their words on their, some of their ads, something along those lines. And I think and hope that that is the case because, you know, they already know that they're not going to beat Ford out. They're not going to beat Chevy out to market. Rivian's already passed all three of them. So if they want to bring a truck to market, they got to have something that's going to blow the other competition away. And they might be able to do that with some of the stats that we've seen. Again, this is all just what they said they hope to do. Like, we don't even have a release date that I could find. So really, it's just all, you know... It's all up in the air. Now, knowing that Ford is already set to do a new version of the Lightning by 2025, I really think that if they can get a solid launch in 2024 and beat Ford's newest version of the Lightning to market, they're going to have a home run on their hands because by that time, hopefully Chevy sales will be dwindling. You know, actually by then they might even have announcement of the Sierra coming to market. There's just going to be so many EV trucks. But if they play it right, I would guess late, mid-2024, right before, again, Ford's redesign, uh, they might have a chance to steal some of the truck market into this EV. And, you know, they might be able to do it. So they did announce that Ram's parent company, Solanus, uh, announced over $30 billion in EV investments. And they're working with companies like LG and Samsung for batteries in these units. And I hope that that pays off. I think that's a good investment. I think Ford's was around uh, 20 and then earlier they had like 7 or $9 billion they invested, plus investments in Rivian. So who knows? They're, they're probably really close. And then uh, Chevy's, I actually don't know off the top of my head. Last I heard was... I think 20. So they're all putting a big amount into their EV section. Yeah. So just had to double check. It looks like uh, GM is roughly in the 35 billion. So everyone's all in on EVs. What can I say? It's a, I mean, it's a great time to be doing that, right? What I'm saying is it will probably be very interesting, at least the next couple years to see who actually really does double down into the EV space and who says, let's just make a couple and stick with what we're good at. Because I think uh, in fact, I insist that a couple of these companies still do that because there's some stubborn people who will never consider an EV and there's some people who prefer a hybrid even. So I think we're going to need all of them for a long time is what I'm trying to say. So back to the batteries. Now here's what I'm just like jaw dropped at because they are announcing a 500 mile range on this new Ram revolution. Uh, but they also announced the size of the battery is ranging from 101 to 119 kilowatt hour. And if you're familiar with the Ford, it's very close to that. I think it's this is a little bit bigger. But the fact that they're almost doubling the range of the Ford, yet they're trying, I don't, I just don't get it. Like they don't have that much time to figure out double the range technology. So it, I, 500 is a huge leap, so I hope they can get there. That'd be awesome. That would immediately take my business. Having a range of 500 would totally get rid of 
any range anxiety. Because, for instance, like my my the range on my vehicle, it lasts about three hundred. And other than long trips, I have no problem at all. So having the extended to like five hundred long trips then wouldn't even be an issue. So five hundred is not only like the dream number, but I think we could safely plateau there. Like if we can get all EVs to around 500, you know, this is my opinion as a a newer, I'll I'll say it, but an EV driver, I think with 500, the average person, of course, everyone's different, could definitely live and, you know, it could totally replace their gas vehicle at 500 without question. I would argue that all day. So, you know, now, of course, if you are using this as your work truck and you drive four or 500 miles a day, uh, obviously you're not who I'm talking about. So, I'll, I'll leave it there. So another thing to keep in mind is there's really no electric vehicles from these guys on the market at all right now. There's plug-in hybrids, like Jeep has some cool 4XE vehicles, like the Wrangler, they just are announced that they're doing a, a plug-in hybrid of the uh, Grand Cherokee, which looks really great. So they're they're slowly entering the market, and I they're, they're like one of the brands that have the luxury of doing that. Like most Jeep buyers... If you're if you're gravitated towards a vehicle like a Jeep Grand Cherokee, like it's not the best on gas and it's not the worst either. So all I'm saying is like if they already have a good market, this slow play into the EV section is probably going to do just fine for them. And I I maybe these guys are they going to be the company I mentioned earlier where, you know, they stick with what they're good at but have a couple electric offerings for people who, you know, want a little of both worlds. So, you know, that I think that's a great spot for them actually. And that's what we know about the Ram. There's really not much more to say, but I do want to compare it to, well, what are the other big classic looking trucks? Now, I don't want to talk about Rivian or Cybertruck or anything, but let's talk about classic truck guy trucks that you can realistically purchase within the next couple of years. And if you're starting to steer one direction, what should it be? Now, obviously, I'm going to point towards the Lightning because that's the vehicle I'm most excited about. However, there's a good chance that reservations don't open again and it stays closed off for the next couple of years. Or, you know, we just don't know about availability. So that could be an issue with the Lightning. And then the Silverado, honestly, on paper, looks fantastic. Like, I've, I'm, I'm really excited for it. I have a reservation for that as well because it looks great. So the first thing I want to talk about is timeline. Like, if you are ready to go EV, well, none of these options are going to be available. Like, I have a, a decently placed Ford Lightning reservation and I don't see myself getting a chance to order for the next year or so. So like even as someone who's been on top of things for the most part, I still can't even get a new electric truck until probably this time next year if I'm lucky. And that's a Lightning because I've already reserved it. So if you don't already have a reservation, your options are not a lot. <laughs> So you can still reserve these Silverados. However, the first edition that they're launching with in 2023 is already no one can reserve those anymore. So the Silverado you're you're waiting at least it says available summer 24. So that's a little bit out. And then this Ram is really far out. But hey, if you're new to this and you want to take the water slow, it might be the perfect one to wait for because you get to see what happens with the other two vehicles or well, the lightning and the silver auto, and then, you know, make a decision off of that. Like, look at what's happening with Rivian right now. So many people are starting to do like towing tests and stuff. And just the numbers are not working out for a lot of people. Like I've seen so many people just like devastated over the news. So like towing is really cutting into range so much so that if your business involves, like if you're a lawn care company or something and you're towing that range, especially let's look at just the lightning and you get the extended range and you think you can do 300, well, it's going to be cut by probably 30%, meaning that you're stuck at like, let's say on a good day, 2,000, including <laughs> or 200 miles of range. Plus, if you got a whole crew in that, like you got four people, you got cargo, that's going to be like, I'm, I'm a little nervous to see what kind of numbers we even see on the Lightning. So that 500 <laughs> range that they're talking about on the Ram, it could be necessary you know and that could just be to do day-to-day -day things right so um a lot of stuff that i'm excited to see is what i'm getting at but knowing timeline i would say your best bet 
because only because you can't reserve a lightning right now, I would just, you, you got to go silver auto right now. It's kind of the literally the only option you could do uh, that or go reserve a Rivian if you want to throw that into the mix. Now, here's a couple comparison numbers that we can, because Ram did announce that they were going to exceed the competition. So let's just talk forward. Like we said, range is on their best version is 300, uh, silver auto 400 and of course respectively we have the ram coming in at 500 so that'll be great to see those numbers and and honestly i would be excited to because we still don't know the epa estimate well of any of these but especially the lightning which could actually end up being more so fingers crossed that those look a little bit better than what we're seeing the ford estimate being uh, moving on, we, we have some really cool features on the Silver Auto that we're not seeing on the other two models. So like they have that trunk that goes down and you can extend your bed, which is, I think, a cool feature. They have things like a heads up display. Like, yeah, RAM might have time to add that, but we know the Lightning definitely doesn't have really techy stuff like that in, 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 you know, at least not yet. And then when we're looking at horsepower and torque, well, the Silverado wins in that respect. I think it's, uh, <clears throat> I think I'm reading it right here. <laughs> uh, so 664 horsepower on the Silverado where the, uh, lightning is actually only 563, which is almost a hundred horsepower less just really steers towards the lightning being very much like almost like a, uh, test go to market unit. Like I think the 2025 rebuild of the lightning is really going to compete more, uh, with the silver auto and Ram once we see them. Well, it'll probably be, they'll all be available at the same time. That's probably why I think that. Uh, and then torque is about the same on both, which is similar on almost a lot of electric vehicles due to, uh, well, electric motors acting similarly. Did that make me sound dumb? Yeah, I think so. EVs are just so new and exciting that it's crazy. Just like these two or three things we learned about the Ram is enough to get media hype forever. It's got me excited. It's, I mean, if you watch this video because it got you excited. So it, it's interesting that like the marketing strategy and cars have been like this for a while, but especially EVs, they, they can just, you know, dribble out taste of, taste of information and control the media cycle for a while. And so two things before I close up here. Uh, first of all, I didn't talk about the Hummer EV, and I just kind of see that as a different class. It's a little more expensive than the class of trucks we're talking about. Uh, I don't know. I should have included it probably, but I didn't, so sorry. <laughs> we, I'm excited to see the Sierra. We, we got a kind of a tease of that the other day, if you remember. Again, it's just that parcel of information. They just showed us a screenshot of the front lightning, and we were like, oh, I bet it's going to be awesome. And it's like, well, yeah, it probably will be, but we don't know. So, you know, we'll keep an eye on here. And you know what's a great way to stay up on that information? Let's go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Eh? Eh? Um, I, I do promise that I get a little bit less annoying over time as some people have noticed. So was, that was, now that was probably the worst marketing pitch I think I've ever done. So, uh, uh <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I'll get negative subscribers from this, but I don't know. This is probably a sign to just end the video. What do you guys think? You already clicked away. You did. Oh, okay. So I'm just talking to myself at this point. That makes sense. I don't blame you guys. Um, all right. Well, I guess we'll end it then. Bye.